Cowboy Jim, how you doing? Um, let's do this. Um, subject, abuse, of course. But in this instance, it's elder abuse. Um, something I didn't think I was qualified to perhaps be a victim of, but um, I'm pretty sure I was. Um, abuse of every kind that I have studied, and I have studied it for a long time, um, is, is this. It is an expression. The abuse is an expression of the contempt that the abuser holds the victim in. I, I think that's true. Um, I'm going to try to just paint you a few uh, pictures. Uh, we won't bother with names or anything much, okay? Um, uh, a guy uh, I went to visit for the weekend uh, and this lady. Uh, the guy, he said, uh, we're going to go over and uh, visit so-and-so. Uh, and, uh, and so we were there and we were standing uh, talking to so-and-so and, -so and uh, her two little girls and uh, they were like three and five or something. And I looked out uh, at the road. Uh, we were in about a hundred yards, not quite. And I looked at the road and I saw a dog uh, running uh, towards the driveway, uh, but it wasn't running, it was trotting like a horse. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty much an authority on, uh, on horses. I don't know anything uh, beyond the fact that I can recognize them as four-legged and uh, gravity and they work together to get me on the ground. Um, I said to the guy, I said, you see that dog out there? I said, it's trotting like a horse. Well, he looked, the dog was not there. Uh, it had been there, but it just, where we were standing it, it just got a little bit ahead of, um, of where we could see it clearly. And um, about 60 seconds went by and there uh, came uh, this giant dog. I said, man, that thing's big. And he said, well, uh, when it was a year old, it weighed 180 pounds. And he says, it's three now, and uh, it, it's a lot bigger. And uh, I, I thought, boy, that, that is a big dog. And uh, I had just gone through some stuff that uh, I'll delineate one day. I, I, I hope I will get to be able to delineate it one day. And I will with the clarity. Uh, trust me. Uh, that dog ended up uh, coming over kind of close to us and it got uh, about four foot in front of me and then it started to growl and it really growled and I was watching it close and the guy, uh, let's call him the abuser, okay? You don't need to worry about a name, just the abuser. And uh, I said, uh, the dog's pretty uh, choked. He says, oh, the dog's okay. He said, the dog's never growled at anyone before. He looked at me. He said, the dog's okay. And, uh, and just to make sure, uh, he just reached over and punched the dog. I really hit the dog. And... Uh, and the dog kind of darted out around behind, and I, I, uh, I thought he hit the dog pretty hard. It's probably uh, distracted it. Um, I was standing. Uh, the abuser was there, and uh, he, he was talking to whoever, and uh, I had my heavy. Uh, winter coat on 
and the first thing that I I realized was uh, when uh, something grabbed me on my butt and literally literally uh, shook me up the dog jumped back and then struck again and this time uh, that dog lifted I was probably down to a hundred and well I'm not sure if I wouldn't have been 160 pounds by then because I had had a terrible uh, uh, weight loss in six weeks two months I went from 204 pounds not all fat uh, a lot of body mass and I went right down to uh, my scales quit working at 167 uh, I moved in that time frame uh, but I, I I I know it went way low really low and when that dog hit me the second time it literally lifted me off the ground and uh, I, I I was shocked I actually, I had never been bit by a dog, bitten. Uh, I turned in the air, and when I came down on on the ground in front of the dog, uh, fortunately it had stepped back far enough, I hit the ground on my knees in uh, what, what I refer to as a fighting stance. And that is, I was as ready as I could be for the dog to make a frontal attack. And uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw that uh, young man uh, run at the dog and he beat that dog. I mean, beat it. It was not his dog, um, but he beat that dog. And that dog took off and uh, we ended up leaving there and, and going back to uh, uh, the home uh, where that man and his lady lived. And he said, uh, got out of the truck, he said, drop your pants. And I said, excuse me. He said, drop your pants. I said, uh, no, sir. Unless you have a rubber glove on your hand and a medical degree, my pants are not coming off. He said, you're going to show me uh, and prove to me. I told him the dog didn't break skin. And he said, you're going to prove to me that it didn't. And I thought, who are you? Who are you? But I thought that a whole lot more. And uh, we'll just delineate a few of these. He said, uh, get back in the truck. That's how he said it get back in the truck and uh, what he meant to say you worthless piece of human dung you get in the truck I'm taking you to the hospital and they're going to prove whether or not the dog broke skin and I thought I'm not going to the stupid hospital I'm sure not getting a needle I don't like them I was pretty sure the skin hadn't been broken. He said, it's your choice. And I thought, I don't like you, son. I don't like you. And uh, I did. A uh, few doctors, quite a few doctors over the years, I've, uh, I've dropped my drawers, uh, three wives. That's it. Um, oh, Bear Ass Lake in the north. Well, no one was supposed to be watching. Um, the dog marked my skin. My winter coat, heavy winter coat, was such that it filled the dog's mouth and it did not get a grip on my butt. And, uh, and I thought, I'm recognizing something here. I'm beginning to see something here 
And uh, so the man's wife came home. Uh, she was a nurse. Uh, um, uh, knew an awful lot about psychiatry, let me tell you that. And uh, she said, drop your pants. And I thought, I am being intentionally demeaned, humiliated. And there's a reason for that. I found out what the reason was, but it is really interesting. Um, when you have come through a true trauma and you are just coming through, you're not, you're not through it, but close. And uh, she said, if you don't drop your pants, she was a nurse. Uh, we're going to the hospital and we're going to verify that you don't need a tetanus shot. What the both of them were doing was a true attempt at humiliating me so much that my self-esteem uh, would be beaten down, diminished. And it was, and I, I had never been around elder abuse. Look at me. I don't think I'm, I don't even think I look old. Um, um, late, uh, no, no, early last spring, um, a beautiful, beautiful lady um, said, uh, there are, is a lot of age difference between us. I never once in my life uh, approaching 70, 65, 60. I never uh, even began to realize that, yes, my hair had turned white. Still, it's kind of brown down there, but I had no idea that I had begun or arrived at being what would be considered old. Didn't have a clue. Um, I did what that uh, devious woman demanded. And I exposed my arse once again. No wound. Little red mark. But no wound. But it was not that either one of them wanted uh, to verify that there was no wound. What they wanted to do was to humiliate me, break my spirit as people used to break horses. Rather than gentle them, they broke their spirits. And those horses uh, almost um, never recovered. Okay, I'm going to do about six more of these in a row. Uh, 14 minutes. Uh, if you have a few years on you, well, I have 72. And, uh, and I don't act like it because I don't feel like it. Stick with me. Let's do a few of these. Let's delineate. Elder abuse. Hey, most people who are abused under that title are so far gone, they're so old. Not only will people not believe anything they say, which I experienced, but everything they had, hope, dignity, respect, honor, 
is stripped away and what is left if that person is not careful. Everything that is left is but a shell of their former selves. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm going to do the next one right away. Thanks. Thank you. Hey. Do I look old? <laughs> Probably. 